This week we'll talk all about printing and specifically how big can I print. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, a lot of viewers have asked a question about printing, and that question is simply, how big can I print? Well, it all depends, and I really need to explain my answer, but I'll just give you the answer right up front, and then we'll dive in and explain why that answer is true. So the bottom line is any camera that is 10 megapixels or higher can print an 8.5 by 11 photo, and any camera that's 16 megapixels or higher can print a 13 by 19 inch photo. But really you can stretch that and you can get all kinds of different print sizes. So a 10 megapixel camera could potentially print a 19 by 28 inch uh, image. A 24 megapixel camera can do a 30 by 45 inch print. And maybe a 16 megapixel camera could do a 24 by 36 inch print. But those are just sort of ballpark figures. And that's one of the frustrations that people have when asking how large can they print because there isn't usually a place that says you can print exactly this size because it all depends on something called resolution. And that's really what I need to explain today. And resolution is always something per something. And so what we're gonna talk about is something called pixels per inch. And I might say dots per inch or PPI or DPI, it's all the same thing. Dots per inch, pixels per inch, all the same thing. So what I wanna do here is I have a bunch of pixels here. These are fake dots. And so we know that our images are made up of little dots called pixels. And so I'm taking these blocks of wood and we're going to call these little pixels. And we have nine of these pixels lined up. And so we need to understand something between our file size and our resolution because they're not the same thing. And later I'll show you in Photoshop that you can even look on uh, in your image information and you'll see the pixel dimensions and you'll see resolution and they're two totally separate things and you can uh, change those independent of each other. So let me help you understand that. Let's pretend we have a clunky camera and it has nine pixels. That's it, one to nine. And so our, uh, our image size, our pixel size would be nine pixels. Now, obviously we would have pixels that are vertical and horizontal. We're gonna keep it simple. We have nine pixels across. Now resolution, is how we distribute those nine pixels. So let's just for argument's sake, say that this desk is one inch. If this desk was one inch, we would have nine pixels per inch. See how that works? Nine pixels per inch or nine PPI or nine dots per inch. That's the resolution. We could perhaps say what we wanna do is we wanna have 18 pixels per inch. Well, what we'd have to do is we'd have to double the amount of pixels that we would smash in here. Now, uh, our printers are limited by how much resolution or how many pixels per inch they could print, but let's just say that somehow magically we could make this be, uh, or we could make these, uh, these pixels smaller to fit 18 in here. What we would have to do, our camera, remember, it still only has nine pixels. And so our software would have to figure out how to smash in a bunch of new pixels. So what I'm gonna do here is, just bear with me here, I'm gonna move this two over here. And what we'd have to do is our software would have to figure out a way to put in an extra pixel here, and then it would have to put in an extra pixel here. And these are pixels that don't actually exist. And so what we're doing is we are changing our resolution using software. And so we're using something ca called uh, resampling or um, um, some different things I'll show you in Photoshop. There's all kinds of fancy words for it. But basically what we're doing is the software is looking to say, okay, here's pixel one and pixel two that I have image information for. I need to take these two things and make something in between that will sort of bridge the gap. And so I can stretch these nine pixels out to 18 and we're playing with our resolution. And the more you do that, the more your image quality is going to start to degrade. So the more we stretch pixels in there, the more you're gonna see that there, it really has to uh, pull some stuff from these pixels to figure out what to put in there. So we don't wanna do that uh, unless we absolutely have to. So let me put these back in order here. So the other thing we could do is, let's say that we wanted to have five pixels per inch, but remember, our image size is still nine pixels. And so what our software is going to have to do is it's gonna have to figure out how to take some of these out. 
So it's going to have to go in here and say, okay, we'll get rid of this guy, and 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 there we go. There are our five pixels. But notice we have all kinds of pixel information that we just dumped out. So when you take your image and you either add pixels in or take pixels out, you're always going to degrade the quality of your file size. And so to really understand all these pixel uh, things and manipulations, what we need to do is really hop over to Photoshop and see this in real life. So let me zip over here. And I've got this Photoshop file that I've already loaded in. Now this is a very high resolution image. In other words, uh, it's a large image size and it was shot with a D3X, a Nikon D3X. It's a 24 megapixel camera, so lots and lots of pixels, 24 million of these little dots in this image. If I zoom all the way in, I'll zip over here to Don's eye, you can see that this just has a lot of pixel information. And with all that pixel information, I can do all kinds of things. I can stretch it out, I can shrink it down, I can throw it out on the web, or I can make a huge banner out of that. But let me dive into something here in Photoshop. If I go on to uh, click image, and then image size, I get this really interesting dialogue. And at the top of the dialogue, I have my pixel dimensions. So this is what your image, your sensor is capturing. So the Nikon D3X, it captures 6,048 pixels horizontally and 4,032 uh, pixels vertically. And uh, so we have a lot of information there. Now that has to be resolved for print. In other words, how are we going to take all of those pixels and put them out on our print? Do we want to put those out in uh, 240 of those per inch or 300 per inch or one per inch? How do we want to do that? Well, that is going to be your resolution. And that's right down here at the bottom. So that's really interesting that the, the uh, pixel dimension and the resolution are two different things. So don't get those two confused because they're not the same. Also, notice that we have this resample image right here. And that is what uh, Photoshop uses to do all that stuff I showed you earlier, adding in pixels or taking them out and doing that in an intelligent way. So what I want to do first is I want to turn that off. I want to turn off resample image because I want to show you something very interesting. So now we've locked this in. We have 6048 by 4032 pixels. And what we're going to tell Photoshop is how to, dis to distribute those using our resolution. So right now at a resolution of 240 pixels per inch or dots per inch, our print size is 25.2 inches wide by 16.8 inches tall. Now notice if I make this resolution 300 pixels per inch, our pixel size doesn't change. It's the same amount of pixels that we started with, but now our print size is smaller because we're smashing the same amount of pixels into a smaller space. So now we can print at 20 inches wide by 13 inches high. And if I take that up, let's say to 500 pixels per inch, well now I can only print 12 by eight. So a much smaller uh, image. So how big can you print? That really is uh, determined by how many pixels per inch that you need to print. Now, how many pixels per inch do you need? Well, that all depends on viewing distance. And so, for example, I have this picture that I printed out a long time ago. And if we look at this picture of this woman from a distance, well, it looks OK. But if we look at this really closely, you can see that the pixels are not very many pixels per inch. There's a lot of space between those pixels. And really close, you can't even tell what this is. It just looks like a bunch of garbly gook. And so, really, understanding how many pixels per inch uh, is determined on viewing distance. So for something that's viewed from a long way away, like a billboard or maybe a set on a theater or something like that, a sign, you don't need uh, really a lot of pixels per inch. But something uh, that you would want to see really close up, like a magazine or a fine art print, you need a lot of pixels per inch. And so that's really where you will determine what that is. The rule of thumb for me is when I'm making prints, I like to keep them between 240 pixels per inch and 300 pixels per inch. Well, what happens, let's say that I want to make this uh, image and I want to make it a two by three foot print, which I've done previously on the show where we've made some large prints. Well, looking at this at 240 pixels per inch, I don't have enough information to do that. The largest I can print is 25 by 16. Well, I can resample the image. 
Now resampling the image is what I talked to you about before where we're throwing in pixels and what I can do here is Photoshop will allow me to do this bicubic smoothing, bicubic smoother, best for enlargements, it's great and so the uh, software is going to do this in a really really nice way and then what I can do is I can tell it you know what I want this to be 36 inches wide and it is going to resize this for me and that way it'll print just fine and so you can really uh, do what I said before you can fudge things now the question is is there any kind of information I can give you that will tell you what your camera will do well I did this crazy thing here I put together this spreadsheet we will make this available so you can download this we'll put a link to it on our YouTube uh, page so you can click on that and download this and the thing that you can do here if I put in all these formulas um, what I did is I put in a bunch of cameras, so a bunch of Canon cameras, 60D, 7D, 5D Mark II, 1D Mark IV, etc. A bunch of Nikon cameras, the D3000, D90, D700, the Fuji X10, etc. And all I did was I put in the horizontal pixels, and you can find this just by going to your camera's website. So if it's a Nikon uh, D7000, just go to Nikon.com and look up the D7000 image specs. and It'll tell you how many pixels it is. So I just put in there uh, how many horizontal and vertical pixels. And then I multiplied those and divided them by a million to get the megapixel size. So the 60D is a 17.9 megapixel camera. And then what I did is I have this little uh, uh, area right here where I can put in how many pixels per inch I want to print. And it will tell me what the largest size is. So on a 60D at 240 pixels per inch, I can print at 21.6 by 14.4 inches. And you can take this spreadsheet and put in how many pixels per inch you want. And that is assuming that you're not going to resize this in Photoshop or Lightroom or something else. This is just your base size. Now, if you really want to know what your uh, maximum print range is using the spreadsheet, you can cheat a little bit and put in here 135 pixels per inch. And this will give you a good idea of the maximum size that you can print using resampling in Photoshop. So a 10 megapixel camera, you could go all the way up to 19 by 28 inches. So a lot, a lot of room. Now the question is, if you look at this, you can see that the 1DX is a 17 megapixel camera, but the 5D Mark II is a 21 megapixel camera. Why in the world would you spend the extra five or $6,000 on that camera? when you could print just as large using a 5D Mark II or even, check this out, this $700 or $800 camera, the Rebel T3i, it's also 17.9 megapixels. Why would you spend so much more money? Well, it's more than just pixels per inch. It's more than just how many pixels you can capture. It's about dynamic range and color and sharpness and all kinds of things. And we covered that previously in episode 41. Make sure you check that out because dynamic range is really important. So it's not just how many pixels you have, but how those pixels are used. So once again, let me recap. If you asked how large can you print, well a 10 megapixel camera can go all the way up to 19 by 21, uh, 28 inches, a 24 megapixel camera if you have one of those crazy cameras, all the way up to 30 by 45 inches and everywhere in between. And once again, it all depends on how you resample those and change your resolution using Photoshop or something else. But I hope that helps you understand resolution and image size and you can put that into practice. Well thanks so much for joining me this week. Remember if you have a question about photography send it to me at askmark at adorama.com. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode and related videos. For all the latest photography, video and computer gear visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com. <laughs>